While poking around in Poppy Playtime looking for skips for the speedrun, I thought I'd share a couple little things that I found going out of bounds that might be cool to some people, especially those who don't understand how video games are made. One of the coolest things is this sign outside because you never see this as far as I'm aware, so I have no idea why it would really be included. Uh, maybe something that'll feature later on, I have no idea, a placeholder for when you finally escape. Perhaps, but yeah, you start in here and these doors are all boarded up and you can't see anything outside, so it's pretty cool that they'd include a sign. The floor here is way bigger than the actual room is. I have no idea why. Here's the uh, grabby tool the game gives you in all of its glory on the other side. And until you load in the area where you first meet Huggy, the only thing that's actually loaded in is this little stop employees only sign. Now once you enter the room where you first meet Huggy, obviously you don't go through most of these doors, and most of them have pretty much nothing. This one's just kind of an open, like, disco floor on it. These are just the same kind of two cubes into more or less nothing. Uh, you can see that the two vents that the kind of conveyor belts go out of. They just kind of end around the corner. Testing is just another little cube. And this is interesting. Uh, even before we get to Huggy's arm that's going to show up here, the stairway to hell, you never actually end up going down there. You, you can't even really see through the window at all. You, you can't see through the window at all. And yet, there's a railing and there's stairs. There actually is, here's a view from the outside. There actually is a little stairway to hell. Something that you'd never see and they have no real reason of uh, needing to put in. Going inside of Huggy, I imagine this is not the same model they use for the evil one because this one is significantly lacking in teeth. And if you top down, you can kind of see the nice dome. And then I was actually curious. I, I assumed that he just teleported, teleported away, but you can tell. You don't even have to go into debug. He just kind of poofs out of existence. Nothing very special to see in the room where you start the power. Just a room. But the really cool thing is now that Huggy's gone, you're going to come and open this door. And when you go through the door, for a little bit, you can see his arm, and then it kind of slithers away when you're playing the normal game. And I, I figured once I first saw this that there would be a T-posing Huggy model on the other side of the wall, because I imagine they'd put his whole model there, not just the arm. And I am correct. <laughs> so now this is the one that chases you, this is the, the evil Huggy, like they even have him sticking into the floor because he's too long. For this hallway so i can't imagine it would be very comfortable <laughs> lanky ass arm now into the room with the power there's not a ton to see this door is empty nothing very cool on the outsides you can see the little uh the holes they extend a ways down but then they just kind of get dark and shut off I don't know what this is. Some door. All of the vents. Uh, you can actually get here, and at some point I'll show you, you can get here just playing the game normally. You can get into all of these vents. They just kind of turn. It's a thing the game does a lot. Turns and then stop making it because you'd never see the turn. Here's a view from the outside. This one actually probably is my favorite room from the outside. It looks pretty sick. There's a scare in this room that most people don't even notice. And I didn't notice the first time I played the game. But you can see Huggy's cute little head <laughs> sticking out the vent. And then uh, I think as soon as you put the power or the batteries in, he backs up and the vent closes. But <laughs> here's a look at his whole body. Honestly, he's kind of sitting... Uh, kinda how you'd expect. They didn't really bother with the arms. The arms are just kinda, you know, T-posing. But you know, he's lying flat on his- oh my god, the angle. He's lying flat on his stomach, giving you the side eye. Oh, 
That's scary. <laughs> That's scary. I'm gonna try and follow along this section of the vent to kind of show where the toys come from when they're dropped on your head. Yeah, they just kind of blip into existence. And look at the super long stretched texture for this. Just one super long stretch texture. So the room drops you off in here, in the toy building factory. And interestingly enough, this toy building factory is actually the same, through the same door that you go through at the start of the game. Uh, you'd kind of turn off this way, like here's the, here's the blue monitor. It kind of just brings you in a circle, unloads a section, a section of the game and brings in the new one. Probably to just keep the overall size of the game smaller. But now in here, you can actually see this from the game as well. All of these are labeled box track, probably just so that a team of people could work together. The outside of this building looks sick. All the different conveyor belts that all use this, the same trick of just going out, turning, ending. They all do that. And then you can see down at the bottom, it really it keeps going like there's a ton of tracks at the bottom even though you'd never really see this far down all the way down to the black and blue worn out looking floor i thought i would uh just for anyone who's curious follow along the toy parts follow along in their journey and see how toys really are built there's only three parts, but I guess it just makes the one toy. Wow. Darkness, and they come out colored. That's amazing. So this one's like the painting room. And I imagine the center one is gonna make use of another dark tunnel, and it's gonna be assembly. Three parts blip out of existence, and the full toy. What even is this thing? It's like a bug, cat, bee, raccoon, something like that. So the toy's been placed down now, the door's been opened. As soon as I step to here, Huggy's gonna come in, but he's still not around and actually i've i've made him come in a number of times while looking for glitches and skips and whatnot and sometimes he doesn't actually even spawn until he st gets to about here so i went ahead and muted the game because the sound here is awful essentially I, my character is standing right there and anytime huggy can't get to you there's just the repeated awful sound of a door trying to close so whenever we're doing out of bounds stuff it's Pretty wise to keep your volume muted. Take another <laughs> look at what the inside of Huggy looks like. Oh yeah. That's honestly scarier than the outside. The inside of the belly, just fur and happiness and love. So as I expected, once you're into the vent, Huggy's gone. Just blips out of existence as soon as the door closes behind you, which isn't a surprise. But, if we look down the path, down the vent, the spot where Huggy first shows up and you see him kind of walk around before blipping out of existence here, he's ready. And he's in full moving position. No weird, well, from the back it looks a bit iffy, but no weird T-posing Huggy this time. Taking a quick peek at the chase scene out of bounds, it looks pretty cool. All around. Huggy's ready for the next jump. Look at this guy. And the sound effects of him moving are ever present around him. Even though he's uh, not yet ready. And I imagine that's because the game wants you to hear him even before you see him. 
So here's an overhead view of the chase, and then here's the last section of the game that will be loaded in once we get there. There he goes. And he gets stuck just about here. Poor guy. What's down here? It's just a discarded... Oh, this is the piece that fell with him, I imagine. Something like that. Poor guy. Forever suspended in death. Still, uh... Still looks pretty happy. And here's that whole building. Pretty dang big. You can get here, and you can, in the normal game, and you can jump into these doorways, but you're never able to do anything because each of the doorways are draw are blocked off. Here's a view of just the whole room. Obviously, you can see this from the game, but it's cool to get a different perspective. A whole bunch of conveyors that pretty much just lead nowhere. And finally, the poppy room. Here's what it looks like from the outside. Just a string of textures. Walls, ceilings. Nothing cool to see on the outside. I don't know why this lamp is on the outside. Another lamp. Take a quick, a closer look at uh, Poppy's room and Poppy herself. I didn't really shed freckles. My god, those eyes. Does she actually have eyes? Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, this place is a mess. <laughs> she kind of looks like the Wendy's mascot. Does Poppy have any clothes? Ah. Uh, no clothes for Poppy. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll probably do the same thing with future chapters, so feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll be doing runs of this game over on Twitch. And I'll probably be making at least one more video about the game, especially if we come up with another skip that we can use for the speedrun. I have a couple in mind, but I, they require a lot of luck to get, and I haven't been that lucky yet. I also haven't done enough runs yet. But yeah, for now, doodles.